Welcome back to this World of Warcraft Let's Play. You're Sambo and a Seraphis, and we're going to get right into it because here we go. We've got a dungeon popped for the Dead Mines. We're just going to enter the queue. There we go. We're into it. So sorry for the short introduction, but we are finally in the Dead Mines. One of the uh, very famous first instances in WoW. Lots and lots of fun too. It's changed a lot. If you've been playing WoW in the past, you'll notice that there's um, big changes in this dungeon. So here we go, we've got ourselves, um, oh, am I the leader? I don't want to be the leader. I'm going to give the leader to um, the tank class. But you can see we've got ourselves into the dungeon here, we get ported straight to it. Um, there should be a bunch of quests to pick up, because now quests are actually in the dungeon. So let's do that. King's honor, friend. Here we go, and the foreman. So we have to take Glubtok down. From Lieutenant Horatio Lane, and by the way, if you are a CSI fan, you'll know that that's a bit of a bit of a joke, an in joke there. Right now, also another thing, you can see the dungeons actually have maps on them, which is very handy. Used to um, be a real pain to get around. Right now I'm just going to quickly set up my interface, for some reason it hasn't been set up right. Raid profiles, where are we? Um, display class colors, display power bars and display pets. And we also want to um, display health text which is health remaining. And one, two, three, four, make them four wide. There we go, that'll do for now. Just like to have a bit more information. Now in this fight here someone can actually use this here, they can use the Defias Cannon. And we've got a nice wand there, we're going to need or greed on that, I'll explain that in a minute. So someone can use the cannons if they wish, which helps add to the DPS obviously. Now you can see here we've got ourselves a, um, a tank, we've got a Night Elf Warrior tank. We've got ourselves a Shaman Healer, you can tell um, by the class colours by the way. We also have ourselves a Human Paladin DPS, we have me, a Mage DPS, and we have a Human Rogue DPS as well. So there's five of us here, all from different realms, by the way, as we make our way through. And like I said, at the moment our only Deadmines quest here is to kill Globtok, and he is the first boss. Now we can see too that these guys are level 15, 20, 16 and 20 and because I've been doing so much talking I'm not at the top of the DPS uh, charts at the moment. Uh, we will get there because we're nice and high level and we should should out DPS most of these people. And there he is, Glubtok, that's the first boss that we come up against. Now remembering too, if we wished, we could actually open the new dungeon journal here. Here we are in the Dead Mines uh, section of it, and you can see all of his abilities. We can read up on them, so if you didn't know what was going on, open up the dungeon finder journal there. And you can see he's teleporting around. We'll lock it in place, hopefully. So he's down to almost about 50%. We're going to use his Arcane Blast ability as he teleports around. It's very hard and you do lose target off him. And of course, that was it. He's down. No, he's not down. That was his assistant. Whoops, there's Glubtop. He's actually still only halfway down. And look at that, he's now casting his ability Arcane Power, so you have to stay well away from these orbs, especially in Heroic Mode, by the way. And you also have to stay out of the area of effects there on the ground as well. Um, that's a lot of damage, and of course it just means that the healer is going to have a hard time if you keep like this. Move, move, move. Get out of the stuff on the ground. Of course it's the age-old rule for... Um, most MMOs and stay out of the goo and of course it's exceptionally annoying for us because it means we have to stop casting when we move of course it breaks our cast. And we've almost got him down, 500 health to go. Clear casting there. Ouch! That was a big explosion, and there we go. And a nice minus cape there, no good for us. So we'll just greed on that. Now, by the way, in case you don't know what this is all about, if you um, 
uh, really can use the item, and it's better than what you've got. Uh, and by the way, there's somebody with take rats. So I just leveled up. Uh, if you can use the item, you can try and knead on it if it's better than what you've got. Otherwise, it's polite to just type greed, uh, click on the greed button, and that way everyone gets a go at it. Now, when you're in a dungeon, you can see up here the quests actually appear here. You click on it, and there we go. Horatio Lane, he's saying, nicely done, a clean kill. The plot thickens. We'll complete that quest. And I'm now honored with Stormwind. So my reputation has been gained. That's very handy. We've got some mining monkeys in here, we've got all sorts of different um, mobs to kill off. Goblin overseers. Of course we just want to go nuts on the DPS as much as we can. Greed on that. Good old arcane blast. Spellbinder Orb, that's very handy offhand there, although currently we're using two. A, a two-handed staff rather, so we can't use an offhand of course. And look at that, we've got ourselves a Goblin Cocktail, we can actually pick these up and use them. And you can see they actually appear in our backpack somewhere. There they are. Goblin Refreshing Pineapple Punch restores 437 mana. So it's actually a little drink that randomly drops. Quite cool if you ask me. So there's our chamois doing the healing for the group there, of course. And Shubes, if I target her, she is our warrior knight elf tank. Once again, looking at the map, thank goodness that there are now maps for these dungeon runs. You can see uh, all the different bosses we've come through here. That's the entrance up the top. We've done Glove Top, and by the way, when you click on it, look at that, it actually brings up the dungeon journal. All the information there, very handy. And look at that, a nice formula for enchanting. We can greed that because we can, even though we, we're not um, an enchanter, we can still sell that on the auction house. If I was an enchanter, I would need it. Alright, we're coming up to the second part of the run here, and if we have a look on the map here, you can see there's going to be a master room with Helix Gear Breaker, and once again we can actually have a look at their abilities in the uh, dungeon journal here. Very, very cool new feature that's been added. So you can see the DPS up the front there doing their job, and of course the healer back here and us being range DPS staying at the back of the pack because we are very squishy we don't want to get up front we would get absolutely slaughtered if we were to be up the front with the rest of the guys you can see for example her health there she's only a level 16 but she's already got 463 health because she's um, speaking herself and gearing herself to be a tank and I might say she's doing a very good job as well So once again, if you have run Dungeon Mines in the past, and pretty much if you've played well, you will have. Uh, by the way, there's a new quest that's popped up there. Like I say, this is the new way that it happens when you're in a dungeon run. Uh, they're talking to you through a machine, effectively, and you click on here. You can see here the carpenter, can you hear me? Excellent. Defeat Helix, Helix Gear Breaker. We'll accept that. And of course, he's actually around here somewhere. In fact, he's on the back, I think, of that lumbering oaf. Um, yeah, he sits up the top there, um, get to getting a ride on that lumbering oaf. So again, that's an interesting uh, quest if we... No, we don't want to join a guild. Um, if we have a look at the dungeon journal, here we are, Helix Gearbreaker, and you can see um, that he leaps onto the back of a lumbering oath and begins to order the oath around while throwing out sticky bombs. And once again, you can go in here and it actually will say, hey, he will periodically toss a sticky bomb onto the ground near a random player, etc, etc, etc. It actually goes through and tells you exactly what the ability does. So, oh, oh no! We've leveled to 21. Oh, hang on. I've just thought of something. That's okay. We can actually stay at level 21. If you're, uh, I keep forgetting. I was saying in the earlier episodes, once we hit 21, we're stuffed. No, we're not. We've got through 21. So we can still do Rage Fire Chasm. So very happy about that. And there we go. There's one of those bombs that we just read about. We've got to move out of the way. After six seconds, it will explode. So we've got to get this lumbering oaf. And of course, if we move up close, we'll be able to see... We get to see the goblin on his back there. So we're going to try and 
concentrate on this guy. Oh, because there's a sticky bomb. You've got to move away from that. And there we go. He's throwing the bombs once again. All right, we're going to build up our buff with this arcane blast because, of course, you remember uh, in my previous episode we are talking about how it stacks its damage ability and you can see up here you can see actually it's got 40% extra damage now so that is just incredible we want to keep that going as much as possible we'll also throw off a couple of our other abilities we've got some instants there oh and we've been captured look at that ah. yikes and wow a whole chunk of health got taken off me there hopefully the healer will notice that and heal me back up All right, now Helix himself has come off, and there he is. So now we actually get to fight him. And he's jumping around all over the place, throwing bombs. Got to keep him in front of us because, of course, our spells won't cast if he's out of line of sight. And once again, if you don't know this fight, uh, you can just go into the dungeon journal and you'll be able to see... Here, stage two, after the Lumbering Oaf dies, Helix Gearbreaker is thrown to the ground and then he then uses his Sticky Bomb ability to move more frequently. And you can see he's got this Leap ability here. He will leap and attach himself to a player's face for 10 seconds. Helix will then immediately pick a new player and leap on them. While he's attached, he punches the player with his normal attack. There we go, we're down. He's down. Smelting pants, leather, so we'll just greed those. And of course we get a quest update there starting to come together it says Her Lieutenant Hiroshi Horatio um, Lane let's complete that quest and of course what we do is we look at our map and we just carry on so now we've got the good old Defias now if once again you have run the dead mines in the past you'll know all about the Defias and of course if you've done questing in Westfall which is a zone in the Eastern Kingdom Kingdoms you will absolutely know all about the Defias they're one of the main threats to the Alliance and they have a bunch of diggers down here in the dead mines and in fact the main boss of the dead mines is a Defias leader if we uh, switch the um, zones here we've got the ironclad cove and this is the second part of the map you can see we've got Vanessa Van Cleef she is basically a, um, a Defias person so that's our major enemy down here but super lots of fun uh, being back in the dead mines it's one of the first very first dungeons that I ran ever in the game and in fact I'd imagine it's probably one of the first runs anyone in the game has um, made because it's one of the first ones that are available especially if you're Alliance so I remember um, you know again well before it was designed like this well before it had maps like this there was actually never a map in the old days it's a very complex dungeon it was a real nightmare to run it, you know you get really nervous about it you can feel your heart pumping because of course it was also a lot harder back then um, and you not only had to contend with you know trying to find your way around but nobody knew any of the fights and um, it was very difficult and it used to take about an hour and a half um, and it was a real accomplishment actually getting through the dead mines in the old old days Right, it's, uh, it was, I was going to polymorph that guy just in case he caused too much trouble. Now, of course, if I notice the health of all of our um, party members you know, rapidly going down, what I could do is help and actually polymorph one of the targets. And that would help because, of course, it would help the healer because we've got one less person bashing on us. And, uh, you know, we'd be able to just lock them down until we're ready to take them on. All right, here we are. We're going through into the forge area. Here we are, the machina, the, the machination. We've got to kill the foe Reaper 5000. And once again, if you've actually uh, run the dead mines before, you'll know all about the foe Reaper down here, and you'll know all about this area. It used to be very hard here. You used to have to stop up the top and pull the goblins up, try and pull them up one by one, or you'd wipe. This used to be an incredible wipe area not so more as you can see we're pretty much rushing through it we've got five other people here with us and we're just blasting through the run nothing like there used to be in the old days unfortunately it used to be a real challenge having said that i think they've done that deliberately because this is one of the first dungeons you'll run so they've toned it down a bit uh, because i can definitely tell you that the runs later on in the game a lot of them get very difficult 
Right, that becomes a device watcher that somebody can actually mount. By the way, you can see there uh, that we've got somebody actually, yep, someone is using that. Uh, Trish, who's Trish? Trish is our human rogue. She's able to use that because over there, we've got the Faux Reaper 5000. That's the big boss that's going to come to life very shortly. Now, let's bring out a pet, shall we, while we're in here. It's no fun doing a run without a pet. Uh, let's bring out, say, uh, Withers. Hello, Withers. So we're going to take down these other Defias Reapers. There are three of them all together. And once we've taken them down, the Faux Reaper 5000 should come to life. And once again, you can actually, um, using, using the Reaper and use it against itself, if you like, use it against its buddies. It has its own special abilities if you mount it. Very cool. But as you can see, it also has a um, very, very small health pool, so it does die very quickly. Right, using the advantage of our long range here just to stay out of the action, of course. Zoom out a little bit so you can see. I do like playing zoomed right in. I know it's not very good from a tactical perspective, but you know, I just love being immersed in the world and being right up close to my tomb makes it feel more that way rather than being way out here making it look like a you know an RTS game or something like that. But the dungeons in WoW are just fantastic. I mean, you know, look at the design in these places. Wait till we step out into the Don't next bit. All right, there we are, Faux Reaver, Reaver 5000 begins to activate overdrive. Look at that, spinning around. If you're caught up in there, it's bad news, unless you've got some mitigating abilities. And once again, we can look in here and look at the Faux Reaper 5000 and actually find out what it's got. You can see overdrive there, activates its overdrive engine, dealing 19 physical damage to every enemy, um, every second for 10 seconds. And then after the, the two seconds, it begins to wildly move around the room to double its normal movement speed. So once again, you can see what it's going to do. And of course, we can look at look at what um, actual loot it's going to drop as well. So you can see here, it's actually got a chance of dropping an Ember Stone Staff, and that is really good for us. Um, if it does drop that, we will definitely be needing on that. It's too far away. Okay, it's doing its wildly run around the room phase. Safety restrictions offline. Catastrophic system failure imminent. Safety restrictions Alright, we've got to run away. It's in harvest mode. And it's harvest is on me. Yikes. So we've got to get out of the way. And there we go, the mach machination. Oh, and it dropped the buzzsaw. And that's not really useful to us, so we'll just greed on that one. There we go, and Horatio Lane, we've finished off his quest, and there it is, the boss down the, well, a sub-boss, it's not the main boss of the dungeon, of course. And you can see now we're in the next level of the dungeon run, and we're going to get out into this ironclad cove area, where there are a whole bunch of uh, bosses. Let's use our Cone of Cold, and of course the Cone of Cold is an AoE, it basically does damage to any targets that are standing directly in front of us, so it's very handy. And we've got these Defias Ghosts here now as well, the Shadow Guards, they've started to appear. But we're on this final tunnel which will take us into the Ironclad Cove where there's a great big ship and a whole bunch of bosses. Including the famous Cookie, Captain Cookie. I'm not sure if you guys will remember him, but he's a big, as you can see there, a big Murloc boss. Very famous in the Dead Mines, and he drops uh, Cookie's Tenderizer, which is a sought after mace, but it's mainly sought after because if you have a look here, look what it looks like. It looks like a rolling pin. So, of course, a lot of cooks who are using, um, you know, um, a special outfit, and I've always got an outfit especially for cooking with my chef's hat and all the rest of it, I always want to get the um, Cookie's Tenderizer from this run because it just suits the outfit so well. Of course, it's a uh, rolling pin. What better outfit? 
uh, accessory could you have for a uh, scout today? Eh? All right, here we go. Oh, a tin vein! Finally, in the run, we find some new types of ore. And that is tin. There we go, the cannon. You just missed it there, but the cannon blows away those doors into the, co uh, the cove, rather. This is a very fast run. We've got a parrot there, a monstrous parrot that we need to take down. And look at that, a schematic for a mechanical squirrel box. So that's an engineer's pattern there that will actually allow them to make a mechanical squirrel. And once again, you can um, you can sell that on the auction house even if you aren't an engineer yourself. And there we go, the big Defy ship in the background. Quest discovered the Admiral. We have to take down Admiral Ripsnarl. And you can see we've got a great big Defias boat in the background there in this cove, which is actually right off the back of Westfall, by the way. But look at it, it's a huge big cavern. Very cool. Let's make our way along this bridge. Don't have a target. And of course we're getting fired upon. Oh no! We got fired upon from the top, which unfortunately means we have to swim all the way back around. That is so annoying. Damn it. I hope we don't miss out on the boss. You can see the guys coming. I oh, know someone else got blown out into the water as well. So it's not just us. Let's activate our fast running skill there, running wild, so that we actually get back a little quicker. Try and stay away from the cannonballs. Right, here we go, up on to the ship itself. And we're gonna make our way along the decks up to the bosses. And the other guys aren't waiting for us. You can see we get a lot of XP. Oh, by the way, in case you're wondering, what are those? They are totems, and we'll explain them another time. But basically, if you're a shaman, you get to use totems as, um, basically they give you or the party lots of extra abilities and buffs. Very cool. Target went out of the line of sight. So we're really powering through this. Normally it's not like that. Spirit and stamina, yeah, we're going to need on those because they're better than the ones we've got. Unless anyone else needs on them, we will get them. freeze all of those guys into place. And a simple robe of stamina. Cool looking robe. We'll just greed on that one though. And that's normally not what happens, but they've gone and engaged the boss already. Admiral Ripsnarl, there he is. That's actually a very silly move to do that when half the party isn't around. But I guess it is easy mode these days, and like I said, a lot of players have only been playing since very recently, so they don't understand all the mechanics. Alright, the fog rolls in. And you can see here we've got three bosses, Vanessa Van Cleef, Admiral Rip Smart Snarl, and Captain Cookie. Captain Cookie's down the back though. And there's Rip Snarl again. So he obviously has different phases as well. If we look at our... Oops, if we look at the Dungeon Journal... You can see here Admiral Rip Smart Snarl, once again, has a bunch of different phases, and one of them is summoning vapor. After the fog rolls in over the deck, vapor creatures periodically form and attack a nearby player. So there you go. 
very, very handy. So again, if you've never played the instance before, nobody has to say, hey, have you not done this before? You don't know how it works, how the fight works. You can just read the dungeon journal. Very, very handy. Now, by the way, those totems are giving us quickly the buffs up here. You can see increases strength and agility by 17. This one here, his flame tongue token that he's put down, increases our spell power by 6%. And of course, for us, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. That's just literally going to increase our damage directly. And there goes Admiral Rip Smart Snarl um, downed. We will accept that, complete that quest, and now we have to, here we go, kill the Defias Kingpin Matthias Shaw. Got another one to kill, and we've got a lavishly jeweled ring, and that gives us uh, uh, intellect, so we're going to need for that as well. Because we definitely want that, a nice blue ring. Oh, look at that, it's Captain Cookie. So Captain Cookie used to actually be down below, and now he's jumping into a cauldron. That's very interesting. Okay, this is all new. Let's have a look in the dungeon journal here as to what he does. He throws food, rock water. And it does say you may click on right click and eat the delicious food found on the deck and that removes the uh, food from the deck by clicking on the player gains the satiated effect. Satiated increases the melee speed of the player for 30 seconds. That's interesting, didn't know that at all. You can see there we've got rotten corn, rotten steak. There we go, we'll eat that. Satiated, so spell casting uh, speed, you can see there the buff, increased by 30%. This is great for our Arcane Blast here, it just means we can spam that. And there we go, we've done it, we've got an achievement for the Dead Mines, it's done. And not only that, but look at that, the, and, oops, not only that, but the uh, Cookies Stirring Rod actually dropped, which of course is a fantastic um, wand for us. That is perfect, so we're absolutely going to need on that one, because that is exactly for our class. Right, and that's all the bosses down by the looks of it. We've got two, and everyone dinging, good lord. We've got a hand Need into help. Horatio Crane here, or Lane rather. And we get to choose ourselves, oh look, Cookie's Stirring Stick, which is a wand. Or we can get a Tablecloth, which is Agility and Stamina. Um, I think we'll go for the wand there, because uh, that's going to actually give us Intellect and Stamina. So there we go, complete that quest. Careful. And look at that, five dungeon quests completed. Got ourselves a, another uh, achievement there. All sorts of things going on. And of course, there's a little bit of a story thing here. Of course, he is uh, basically a parody of Lightning the guy from CSI. The Alliance. And there is a whole storyline here. Let's just say thanks to everybody. You have my gratitude. There we go, and everyone will leave the party now. And of course, when you finish a run, you are actually free to wander around. And what I'm going to do is, if I can get past these mobs down the bottom here, I'm going to show you the old way out, because over there, that is actually the exit. That's where you'd normally have to run. Now, of course, these days, all you have to do is right-click on here and teleport out of the dungeon, or drop party, and you'll actually be able to get out, and it'll basically put you right back where you were. Um, but what you can do if you want to end up out in Westfall, let's have a look on our map, here we go. This is Westfall, which is down here in the bottom of uh, the Eastern Kingdoms, you could actually walk out that exit over there. But uh, we don't want to do that because that'll leave us miles from home, come to think about it. So what we want to do is basically leave the party now. By the way, um, just in case you're wondering what I was doing up here, um, that isn't the typical party interface. What I've done in my options for doing dungeon runs is I've gone into, whoops, not options, gone into the interface tab here and I've set an option which says somewhere use raid style party frames. Now look what happens if I take that off, you can see that it just goes back to the old style of party frames. I actually prefer the raid ones because they're a lot easier to click on. It gives us the class colors, gives us their um, resource bars, health remaining, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and of course you get this handy marking tool as well, which also has a ready check button here. And if you're the party leader, you can use it. Um, there's another cool feature in the, um, whoops, let's cancel, what's going on here? Cancel that, we've lost our frame rate for some reason. 
Um, there is another thing here where you can actually put a marker on the ground. It's very cool. Um, we'll just pause the video for a second. All right, sorry about that. Not sure what happened. Um, yeah, there's this here for if you're the leader, you can actually click on this and choose a color and then click somewhere. Oh, doesn't like it. Hang on, let's try again. Red, no, something's broken. Maybe it's an add on that's breaking that. But what you can basically do is mark an area on the ground. And this never used to be here, by the way. It's very handy. So, for example, if you were wanting to say, hey, look, everybody, uh, I need you to stand over there, please. You can actually grab that little flag, click on it, and then click on the ground. And it actually marks, you know, whereabouts you want everyone to stand. All right, so that's it for us. Let's leave the party, which will kick us out of here. And as you can see, basically because of the new way the Dungeon Finder works, it'll take us straight back to where we were, which was of course questing in Darkshore at the ruins of Orbidine. Anyway, I'm very pleased that I suddenly realized, whoops, that of course it's not level 21 that we needed to worry about, it's actually level 22. Although you can see how much XP you get from a dungeon run. Good lord, we're already almost halfway through. Oops, um, already almost halfway through level 21 just from doing that run. So, you know, we're still going to have to um, very quickly queue for the other instance that we haven't done, which is Ragefire Chasm. And uh, we can actually have a look at that on Atlas. Let's open up Atlas. Got all sorts of breaking add ons there. That's what those errors are. It's basically because. Uh, we've got a new patch out and a lot of the add-ons haven't been updated for the new patch yet so that would be why that's happening. Uh, what am I doing? I'm trying to find Kalimdor and we're looking for Ragefire Chasm. That's it, that's where we need to go as well before we hit level 22 because that's when these will run out and you can tell why I want to do it because of course not only do we get all the goodies but we also get a, the achievements and I want to have all the classic dungeons in my achievement list. Anyhow, let's see if we got any goods. Did we win anything at the end of the day? Yes, we've got ourselves a lavishly jeweled ring. That is fantastic. Let's go to our outfit. We'll go to normal and we'll pop that ring on. It gives us five intellect and you can see it's a blue item. We'll save that. And we'll also, um, let's have a look. What else do we pick up? We've got some willow braces of the whale. That gives us extra spirit and stamina. We're absolutely going to use those as well. We'll save that. Yes. And by the way, we also need to do the same for our fishing. So let's pop that onto the fishing set and also pop our ring. Where did our new ring go? There it is. Put that on there. Save it to the fishing set. There we go. Equip our normal set. What else do we have here that we picked up? Oh, we've got cookie stirring rod. And you can see if I hold down shift, that gives us a whole bunch. Two crit strike, more, um, much more DPS, 10 DPS in fact. Better, one intellect. And again, it's a blue item. So we're definitely going to equip that. We'll go to fishing and we'll swap out the rod there as well. There we go. Save that. Yes, go back to normal. Although I do notice we also got cookies stirring rod. This is interesting. Stirring stick versus stirring rod. Okay, so let's have a look here. It's they're both wands. Ah, uh, okay, no. In actual fact, I think the stirring rod that we have equipped is going to be a little bit better. I think. Let's have a look. Well, less. Yeah, it's going to give us two stamina, but that's it. So just as well we got the other one. So now we've got ourselves one, two, three blue items. Very happy about that. So it obviously definitely pays to do the dungeon runs. Plus we've got a whole bunch of stuff that we can actually sell as well on the auction house. All right, and we got a, look at that, um, Holly. We've got archaeologist Holly is yelling at us, and I remember her from the old days as well. So we've got lots to do. We'll end up um, in this episode here, because of course it was just an episode specifically dedicated to the dead mines, and I'm glad that that actually did pop. So hope you enjoyed that. We're going to go back to our normal questing here in Orbiting now. Um, if you have any questions about the dead mines, because we raced through it pretty quickly, make sure you leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. But I certainly hope you enjoyed that. Well, importantly i certainly hope you'll join us in the next episode and especially if we get ourselves into a rage fire chasm so on behalf of myself sambo and seraphis our wargan mage it's us saying take care have a great day we'll see you later and bye bye